Hey everyone, um, just wanted to apologize, kind of, uh, for kind of my meltdown. I have these mini eternal explosions sometimes, and rarely, unfortunately, they can be external, and that's why I use these kind of tables because I usually wind up smashing the other ones up. I've almost been evicted from my apartment. That's a side of me I don't like talking about or, or God forbid, showing. Though it's happened on a few occasions. I mean, we all have our tempers and whatever. Uh, and I'm going to admit, I was so angry, I almost threw this table across the room. So it wasn't just sadness I was feeling. Um, but, yeah, just this is my practice deck. Uh, here, this is just going to be kind of low-key. I'll be practicing slights as I talk. This is a, whoops, this is a very popular brand of cards. As with, of course, the bicycle brand. And I got a new deck that I will do, and it's sealed. It's called the Phoenix deck. And, uh, I'll unseal that for you for something test conditions. Uh, yeah, uh, no, what I should have done is what I've done in the past and instead of, instead of going so extreme as saying, I was going to delete my videos and, uh, seeing the time and, uh, not make any more videos. Uh, instead I just should have done a vlog or vlog. Vlog is what I'm doing. Or you can call it a video blog. Anyway. The lighting is kind of low, and that's so you could see the cards better. Because with my kitchen light, and I've showed you this before. Um, see that? Though you can see me well, there's too much of glare. Um, but yes, I've been... Uh, just kind of going through a little bit of stuff. Over the past three weeks, two weeks, I've been weaning myself off my Paxil, which I do know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but I have the physician desk for reference. I have a lot of medical books, and I've studied just reading up and talking to doctors about medicines and stuff. And... My doctor pretty much, you, you know, I didn't ask him, but uh, if I did, he, he would have said, go ahead. Um, he kind of trusts me in that regard. Uh, but yeah, and I haven't quite grieved the loss of my friend. Uh... And by that, I mean, like, crying. I rarely cry, and there's times when I want to cry, but I can't. And that really, that's kind of a sucky thing. That's when you know you're, like, in, like, an extreme depression, is when you're just so worn out, you don't have the energy to cry. Um, you know, uh, 
But yeah. Uh, huh, cool. Anyway, um, because when I cry, I'm a hard crier. And it's like a loud crying. It's like wails. And when, once I start crying, it's hard for me to stop. I can cry for an hour and a half, two hours straight, like really hard crying until I start gagging and everything. And it's so painful. But it's like a purging because afterwards I feel like a calmness and a weight that's been lifted off my shoulders. You know, I often have those delayed reactions, like when my uncle passed away in 2005. It wasn't till five or six months later that I really broke down due to that. Um, also, I had a site that ripped me off. Usenet.net, never use that site. Um, granted, I should have read the user agreement, but honestly, who really reads that? Um, because they said they don't do refunds. Because when I joined the group, it wasn't what I wanted. It was a hard group, and uh, I just... And for three days, it was constant back and forth. Con and, and there was like 27, honest to God, I can show you my email, but honest to God, exchanges. And I told them I wanted a refund. Uh, they wound up charging me twice because what had happened was I had signed in on this email okay and they said that they all that I was already a member and I wasn't able to log in even by renewing my password so I signed in again hoping they'd have the common sense to know it's me because I always use the name Edini in my email and I told them so and they said I had two accounts and blah 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 and uh, it was a really horrifying experience I've had the past three days dealing with that site. Uh, Use Next uh, is a good site. Uh, but yeah, it's just combination of stuff, and then and then with the other what with that uh, video. Um, but, you know, it's, it is what it is, and I'm going to put it behind me. Uh, I've been trying to live the law of attraction, and I think that's kind of what caused me to build up all that stuff inside. Because it is a universal law, it does work like the law of gravity, because whatever you think is, whatever you think you are, you are. You're thinking, and, and this is uh, the hypnotic rules of the mind I went through. If you think you're going to fail, you're going to fail. So you have to think good thoughts and stuff. But I was having, like, Like every, like all of us, every day I was having, um, darn it, I was having, uh, just, uh, normal kind of upsets. And I felt like if I talked about it, then I'd be attracting it, and I didn't want to do that. Uh, but I guess you can. Someone said that if you have a, problem you can talk about it deal with it and then go back to putting that positive energy out because 
we get back what we the energy we put out that's the law of attraction they also say to have an attitude of gratitude and to write down that's like my gratitude list and then I've I've written certain things uh, like I did a personalized hypnosis session 40 minutes on finding a mate and they also say to put a reasonable time date in which you want your goal to achieve so on the 14th so that would be like the middle of January anyway I wrote I will have in the next 30 to 60 days at the longest a awesome sweet kind-hearted girlfriend that I find really sexy to me and she in turn finds me sexy she'll be accepting and want to be a mother in the next two years she'll love animals kids but above, above all God we'll get along with each other's families because I've had issues with that in the past she'll be a bit younger than me I'm not talking underage and have experience in cheerleading or dance or acting singing you know some type of performance type thing um, she'll love my talents and uh, like driving without shoes which I won't get into you, you know about that we'll be married within 12 months from now we'll get along very well and they say to have like a focus board like you cut out the things you want and it's not wishful thinking not at all but you cut out the things you want and you paste them up and they say to live as already having achieved your goal um, and I put positive quotes because even if you don't read them and I do read everything I put up still just peripheral vision it goes into your subconscious mind I don't know what you can see but this is what I have above my computer I control my temper well have an attitude of gratitude Eddie congrats on your new girlfriend true love at last this is one of my favorites I am in every sense of the word a girl magnet to sweet cute Kurt, kind girls everywhere and this is very true if you visualize it then by law it will materialize I love myself Jesus and others fully a hundred percent Eddie you'll be a great dad I've be beaten my depression and anxiety I don't know if you can see it but I but uh, I have pictures above my TV and quotes and under my TV it says smile more and when you see that you cannot help but smile and it takes less effort to smile than it does to frown and when you smile it releases a feel-good chemical so in some ways I've been doing better and basically the hypnosis session that was personalized for me I wrote the I wrote the eight and I didn't include the induction the Dave Elman the one I use the most I didn't include that but I but I I read the script and I used the art of compounding and in it I repeated 15 times and yeah you know you might say well just repeat it three times five times at the most but the more you repeat it the more you grind it in the more excited you get about it 
and it and it says something to the effect is every every day I become more and more attractive to girls because I'm me, a great person. Each and every day I attract girls more and more because I'm me, a great person. And so you get that really ingrained. And then I did the red pattern, which is whenever you see the color red, it will seem more vibrant and it will solidify the suggestions and remind you of the suggestion. So it's a post-hypnotic suggestion. Um, you know, I, I use some NLP, uh, embedded commands, uh, future pacing and so on. So, uh, and I've listened to it twice, uh, and, uh, it's a good session. That's not to brag, but it's, it's a good session, I think. Um. It's personalized, and I do get into the sexuality part a little bit, uh, but that's only because that's part of it. And as relationships are not one-sided, they're two-sided, um, I mention, you know, that we meet each other's needs, you know. I satisfy her to the fullest. She satisfies me to the fullest. And instead of putting the middle of January, I said over and over, and you will meet this girl by February 1st, 2014. And I have to have that faith. And, uh, yeah, that's how the law of attraction works. Um... You know, if you want a dream house, cut it out and 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 put it on. Uh, I don't know if you want to see me practice some on my slides, but uh, I'm just shuffling and so on. This is kind of a good practice deck and whatever. Um, but yeah. Uh, That's uh, how you do it. Um, and they say they have a focused board and to visualize it every day. Um, and by doing that, it kind of just changes your whole mental process, which it has to a big degree, as you can see. Um, you know, I... I I still got a bit of work to do as far as anger and my sensitivity or oversensitivity, I should say, because sensitivity is not necessarily a bad thing. Actually, any emotion isn't really a bad thing. It's how you deal with it, you know, um... And this is the hard part of what I wanted to say. Someone through the, uh, Brian Lee, he had mentioned this, and I'm not asking for this because I, I like doing what I do because of the change that it puts in others. And I like getting the good feedback. And to me, that's enough. But he said, you know, I have over 5,000 subscriptions. And he said that if uh, half of my subscribers only sent $1 donation, that would be $2,500 a month for me. And... I'm not going to lie, you know, that would help me. Um, as there's things I need, like I need a suit for my formal gigs. Um, 
and a lot of the top online certification courses, the advanced ones, that they, they, they cost about that much exact. Uh, I can show you on the site, the, the sites. Um, there's this one, it's like you're in the classroom and uh, you ask questions through the computer and it's like twenty three hundred dollars and you get nat you get certified by the National Guild of Hypnotists and every hypnotist I can pretty much guarantee ninety per cent or ninety five percent are certified by them. Um and and, and he's like, yeah, if, if people just sent only one dollar a month, uh you know, that would help you out because, you know, I had told you, you know, I haven't got a cat yet because of money problems and I, I let my site go uh, because of money problems because I would rather lose my sight than ask for money. Now, I know I do ask for donations and I have my donations link at the PayPal, which is my email, which is on every description. But I always promise myself I would never come out directly, ask for money, unless like if it was on my site, if it was like an MP3 at a set price or something. But um, no, I, I like doing what I'm doing and I like doing it in the spirit of not expecting anything in return. That is not to say that if you do provide a good service, like uh, if I had a hypnotherapy office, that uh, you should do free sessions because no, uh, you are doing a good service and uh, you know, you deserve to get paid for it. But this forum, YouTube, isn't necessarily like that. I do know if you do get to 10,000 subscribers, you can ask for paid subscriptions. Which I tell you now, I promise I would never do. Um... And anyway, uh, yeah, so that's what he said, and that was kind of my response to him. Um, you know, there's a lot of other worthy causes that can uh I don't know, like the SPCA Adopted Children Fund that can use the money much more than I can. All right. Um, I, I've been wanting to do this for a while, just kind of certain terms in magic and in mentalism, which, yes, they are separate things. Because, and I'm not complaining, because I will do a mentalism feat. You never call it a trick. It's, a, it's, a, it's an experiment, a feat, or, or something, um, or an effect. Uh, but someone will say, hey, that was a good trick. And though it was a compliment, I'm happy about that. But in mentalism, that's why I specifically say, like in the title, mentalism feed or experiment, um, that's totally different from magic. Well, not 100% totally, because, yeah, there is some trickery or secret methods. It's more based on psychology and stuff. But in mentalism, you are creating the illusion 
of psychic ability. Okay? And actually, it would be my fault if someone says that's a good trick because I did not sell it good enough as pseudo-psychic ability. Um, I'm going to look here. <laughs> this is what a top mentalist says. I've been doing it for a long time. Hi, his name's Bob Cassidy. Um, and that's not to, not to say you're really psychic or or whatever. Um, but I, I think I, oh, theories and methods for the practical psychic. Because another name for mentalist is psychic entertainer. Because a lot of people don't know the term mentalist. And even on my card it says magician. Psychic entertainer, and I'm not saying I'm psychic, um, and, uh, hypnotherapist. Okay, it says, how to tell if you are doing magic or mentalism. Pay attention to what the gen... To what the audiences generally ask after seeing you perform. Do they ask things like, how is that done? Can you show me another trick? My five-year-old has a birthday coming up. What do you charge? If your answer is yes, then you are simply doing magic. Which is best described as effects with a mind-reading theme which are nonetheless perceived as magic tricks. They do not create the illusion of the real thing. If, on the other hand, you have succeeded in creating the illusion of mentalism, you will receive responses like these. Did you learn that somewhere, or is it something you were born with? How did you know that as opposed to how did you do that? Get away from me, man. Don't be messing with my head. You know, and like I said, you know, I'm not putting down any compliments. I'm very thankful for them. But that's, that's why I specifically say if I'm doing mentalism I put that in the title mentalism feet uh, thought reading or something okay and that there's some people they there's some mentalists they say you should not use playing cards and mentalism because people will think of card tricks magic tricks but no that that's not the case because when an audience sees a deck of cards, they, they think of like Texas Hold'em and so on. It's your presentation that has to sell it. Like something like this, for an example, would be a magic trick or sleight of hand. Uh, cards taken, right? What is it? Okay, a two of diamonds. And you can mix a deck up, whatever. And you could riffle. They could put the card in anywhere. Look, I'm not holding any gaps. No cards are sticking out or anything. Give the card some cuts and so on. Um, you can even uh, shuffle like this. And, uh, you could say, I, uh, think about your card, okay? Just go ahead and do that, okay? Because look, right here behind your ears, your card, okay? Obviously, that's a card trick. Now, if I were to just riffle the cards, and they were to only look at a card, 
and then I was to slowly decipher it, then that would be considered mentalism. Okay, here, I'll do it under test conditions with a brand new deck of cards. And no, I didn't like uh, unseal it and glue it through the bottom because you can tell, you know, and it's ba made by the plane, the U.S. playing card company. Um, I can never get these references that good. All right. Here. Okay. Let's break the seal on this SOB. Okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, see, every deck is unique because of the Jokers and the Phoenix deck, which is what this is. Um, and you could also tell the aces are usually different. Look, look how beautiful it is, the jokers. I have an older deck of cards, that's how I know. And if you look at the aces, they're beautiful because they're much bigger. It's a beautiful deck of cards. Um... So I'm going to do some thought reading under test conditions, okay? All right. <clears throat> and we could see how we do. All right. Now... I can riffle like this, and you look at the face of the card like that, and there's no way I can know what that card is because I can't see the back. It's not a marked deck, but even if it was a marked deck, I still wouldn't see the back. Okay. And so on. And that that's what's very important in the mentalism. All right, start out with a deck of cards. All right. And I want you to see there's no reflections or mirrors or other monitors or any bullshit like that. All right, I'm, I'm going to cut them. Okay, somewhere. Here. All right, I do it with a flat hand. So you don't think I bent a card purposely during the shuffle so I can easily cut to it. Um, I want you to go ahead and look at that card. That's it. I put it in the box. Test conditions, like I said. And that's the jokers. All right. Concentrate on that card. Concentrate. I want you to send me the image, okay? Send me the suit. Well, first, think red or black. Okay, I'm getting red. Nice, okay. So it's either a diamond or a hearts. Now, I in your mind, I want you to shout it to me. Shout, me, sh shout the suit to me. Okay, I'm getting a hearts. Look in my eyes. It's the four of hearts. Was I right? I was. Thank you. Appreciate that. So there you, you have seen, I hope now you've seen the difference between sleight of hand magic and a mentalism feat or experiment. Um, and 
if you felt like I was talking down to you, I wasn't. I was just clarifying it because I, because like I said, I explained it before, and uh, afterwards I'd I'd still get like, hey, good trick, uh, and so on. And again, that's not complaining, but and and I would reply and I would say thank you for the compliment on the mentalism and I'd put that in caps feet that I did I appreciate it you know it's just kind of educating and kind of getting people used to different things um I would like to teach you a trick if I may um I don't do much with coins but this here is kind of a cool little thing. Like I said, I am not a coin magician. You take a coin, right? Now watch. No, I, I, I didn't drop it or anything. All right, take your pencil go like that and you make it vanish and uh, that's a pretty good thing all right how you do it is you put it in the thumb crotch which is right here Okay, so their angle is from here because it has to look like it just goes in the palm to do that, but it really goes here, and again, your hands are curled as you shut. It really is in there. Do not do this. Make sure they do not see that part. And then I'm going to expose this. I'm going to do it from a bad angle just so you see what happens. You stick the, the pencil through. And as you do, you clip that coin between the fingers like that. As you grab the pencil, it's now here the coin as you go like this and make it vanish and because you're holding a pencil of course your hands gonna be shut so it's natural for the, for the coin to be in that hand okay so it would look like this hey show you something cool again this is magic sleight of hand um, we're going to take a coin, watch, take a pencil, go like this, watch it, make it vanish, okay, I'll go through the tutorial once more, thumb crotch, and they're seeing it from this angle. Stick it through. Clip it between the fingers as you go like this. And make it vanish. Do not go like this. You want to make it magical. And kind of do it slowly or a finger at a time. That, that, that's a little bit of... Uh, ways of making your magic uh, better but uh, I am done with this trick so we can just uh, move on from that all right uh, and of course I just laughed it they call that laughing uh, <laughs> and uh, I will show you an impossible card location. An impossible card location, all it is, 
is a card trick where magicians themselves would even have trouble uh, figuring it out. Um, here. Let me get rid of that. I'll just mix these up. This is a bit long. Like I said, you, you're, you're, you're getting a good full kind of a lecture, to, uh, so to speak, um, and so on. But a card location, uh, an impossible card. They should all be impossible, but... Uh, if, if the word is directly in an impossible card location. Uh, and that's what it is. Uh, and most magicians would have trouble figuring out. What you do is you take the deck, you cut it like this, and you tell someone to give it one shuffle like this. And, this, and, and here is where you turn your back. So from this point on, the backs turn, you say shuffle those halves together, so that's what we do. Okay. And you say cut the cards anywhere you want. And look at the face card. The face card's this card because it's on the face. Okay. And then you say give it one straight cut, and that's just the top to bottom cut like that and then replace them back on the deck okay and then is when I turn around again all of that's done with my back turned from once they do the shuffle they cut they look they cut it and replace it and then I just go through the cards kind of giving the puzzling look Hmm. I say concentrate. Yes, I, I do think this, in fact, and I did place this here, was your card. Now, you might think I somehow estimated because I'm the one that did the cut. But no, that's not what I did because, like I said, from that point on, is when they themselves uh, start, and it's a it's an awesome card trick. Uh, so again, this is what it looks like. The magician gives the cards a cut, and he says, "Okay, I'm going to turn my back. When I turn my back, I want you to shuffle these two halves together." Okay. So here my back would be turned. All this is done with my back turned. I say give the cards a cut. Look at the card you cut to. I don't know if you can see that. Cut the cards and give them a straight cut. Boop, and put them on top. Now obviously they're doing that. I don't know if they would have cut deep or low or whatever. I'd go through. I'd say concentrate, concentrate. Hmm, okay. And this would be good if I was performing for a girl. And this is a line I use a lot. And I and it's not like a pickup line. I don't believe in them. But it's a charming little line. I, I'll say, this card matches your personality, doesn't it? They'll say, yeah, it does. Uh, and, uh, yes, you are, in fact, a queen of hearts. Aww. You know. You get it. That's more a card trick, but again, if the presentation is is um, presented differently, that can be mentalism instead of just a card trick. Uh, so, yeah. Uh... This is something new, and then I'll let you get back on with your lives. It's 45 minutes, 
but how often, I, I don't think I've ever done anything with just me and you talking, kind of shooting the shit type of uh, back and forth, although it's just me talking. Um, this is a good card control that I learned, and it's called the fancy card control because it is fancy. A card's taken. Okay. Look at it. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. And it is put back in the deck. Okay. Again, you see it. It goes in. Like that. And the rest of the deck goes right on top. And you say, check this out. Watch. Go just like this. Like this, like this, snap, and you've controlled it to the top. But of course, you do a few shuffles keeping it on top. But yeah, it's, it's a fancy way. It's That's why they call it the fancy control. But uh, now I can't use that for you. <laughs> because you'll know, oh, he's uh, controlling it. Um... But that's one of my specialty is card controls, full deck controls, false shuffles, and I'm not going to get into that. Um, so, I explained my situation, I hope. I, exp I explained to you the law of attraction and how I'm trying to really improve my life uh, and so on. Um, and hopefully you enjoy that. Um, and do that. Put positive quotes on your walls. Put it in size 72. Bold, bold, you know, so, so you can see it. Because though I'm looking here, that information still is going into into the subconscious and I have most of it here because I'm on my computer a lot and by my TV and I have some stuff in my bedroom and stuff on my front door so I look at it when I leave so those are some helpful tips and as I said I did promise I would do a cool uh, self-hypnosis thing um, teaching self-hypnosis and it's not like the lighter state like I taught before where you do this um, it, it, it it's literally night and day because when you do the technique you're like this to this literally like that, like a light switch going on and off. And actually, that's kind of part of the visualization. It's called the light switch hypnosis, uh, self-hypnosis technique. I get you in deep hypnosis. We install that into your brain. Um, and, uh, and then we practice it three or four times. And it's a session that if you listen to it, you must not fall asleep. It, as it's instructional and it gives good suggestions because you awaken, you know, or, or I emerge because you're never asleep. I emerge you and then we practice it a couple of times. And then I say practice it for one week at least 10 times a day. I know that's a lot, but I say from 30 seconds to two minutes, okay? And then once a day, you'll listen to a 20 minute recording. You'll do the self-hypnosis technique because on, on that video I'll make, there's gonna be a 15 to 20 second time delay and it's all going to be blacked out. I'm not going to introduce it or anything. You know, I'm going to say you must see part one 
or this won't make sense. You, you'll do the light switch type technique. You'd go down, and that just deepens it, so it reinforces it. So it's through reinforcement, through that week of training. And once you have that, you have a gift for life. Um, and I have made those for myself personally, but um, I haven't gone into the training myself, and I want to do that first. Uh, I have the tapes for it. I just got to do the sessions. But I've been busy with the other session. All right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed this and just spending time with me. And if you do want to donate um, any money, it, it could be five cents to whatever, you know, you can, and that's at E D D I N I underscore eight one nine seven six. That's my birthday at yahoo.com, and that would be on the PayPal. That would be the email you would send whatever to. I am not asking, I'm just saying that if you would want to do that. But yeah, I, I thought that that guy did kind of make a good point. You, you know, that, that people for having good quality, in his words, relaxation tapes, that people just sent you $1 a month, like even if it's uh, 200 of your 5,000 subscribers, that's $200. But again, I'm not in it for the money, though money is good, um, but it's not the be-all, end-all, and there are things I could use. Um, all right, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I have enjoyed doing this. Practice that trick. That's if you want to. Practice that coin trick. And I'm not very good at coins, but that's kind of an easy one. Um, to me, it is. But practice that in a mirror and make sure you know the angles. You know, make sure no one is seeing this point of view. So you'd be kind of like that. You'd push it in, clip it as you pull the pencil out. The coin would be like right in here. And, well... You can back it up and see the tutorial. All right. I love you all. And I'm happier, you know. Uh, I just need a good night's sleep. I've been up over 24 hours. I've been having a little trouble sleeping. So, all right. Just got to take my meds, get a good night's sleep. Love you all. God bless. Peace. Goodwill to men.